Hello and welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's come across my videos and has started watching them because for a long time nobody was watching them and it's really nice to have people watching, albeit a little bit terrifying. But ultimately it's what I want, so thank you. I know most of you have subscribed for makeover crafty art content, which I have two videos currently in the making, but those videos do take quite a long time to make and I don't want to have huge months long gaps in between videos ideally although sometimes that might happen I'm not going to make any promises. For now though today I have a relatively quick and easy video to make which is a collective thrift haul video. I want to be conscious on this channel not to be promoting overconsumption, which I think is something that haul videos can do. Most of us in the west have way too many things and we're way too comfortable constantly buying new things and that's something that I've had to try and actively unlearn. I'm not perfect at it and I also do love bric-a-brac which is an issue for me. All of this stuff is things I've bought over the last five months since February of this year. I've been dutifully logging them down on a spreadsheet on my laptop down here so that I could take the tags off and obviously use them in the meantime as I was collecting things for this video. I have 18 total things to show you which comes to a total of £82.95 which makes the average item price for this haul £4.61. I've got some clothing items, I've got some homeware bits and also some bits for future craft projects. So I'm just going to pick off my pile and show you as we go. So first on the list is this beautiful thing right behind me, which as you can see is a doll's house. I have always wanted a doll's house. When I was a kid, I had a friend whose family was obviously more wealthy than mine. She had a lot of really good toys, including both that Barbie princess carriage and also the Barbie horse trailer, both of which were things I coveted greatly. And she also had an incredible vintage doll's house, which I was obsessed with. I remember when I used to go to her house, I used to fantasize about just being left alone with her toys so I could really get into playing with them. Because if you grow up with an amazing doll's house you're probably not that interested in playing with it every day but I was desperate to and I've made it to 32 years old and now I finally have a doll's house of my own as you can see from the sticker here this bad boy was five pounds which is an amazing deal especially considering it came with all of this furniture got a variety of things in here there's a little bed table cabinets a Welsh dresser even. I actually used one of the little cabinets on the wall in my toilet makeover video and I think lots of these bits will be repurposed for craft projects. This little chair in particular I think is very nice. Everything you could ever want. This is like every wardrobe that doesn't sell in a charity shop. Broken piano. This one's a bit too fancy for my liking. I don't know about the Welsh dresser. The dark wood is not on vogue at the moment. There's such good chairs. Like that one, obviously this guy again. This one's also nice, little armchair. Minimal Scandi kind of vibe. I think lots of these I'll turn into Christmas decorations because I like having a selection of kind of stupid shit on my Christmas tree. My idea for the doll's house is sadly not to use it as a doll's house because even though I have tried, I no longer have the imagination to be able to play in the way that children do. So while I would love to do this up as a house and have little dolls and stuff in it, I just know it wouldn't get touched. So that seems a bit silly to me. Instead, I think what I'm gonna do is use this as some sort of shelving storage solution. I think in my utility room. There's a good amount of space in here to have various different things. Even though it is going to be functional storage, which is boring and adulty, I am obviously going to lean into the fact that it's a doll's house and do up the walls, maybe add some art, some wallpaper, do the flooring, and then use it for storage. But yeah, five pounds. What an absolute steal. So I think you'll be seeing a video about this project at some point in the future, though it is relatively low down on my list of projects currently. But subscribe if you want to see that. Next on my list, let's just pull from the top of this pile. This is a clothing item. It is this dress. This is from Wallace originally. I would say it's probably, I don't know, 
early noughties and it's a stretch denim dress with some floral embroidery on the top and bottom. I just thought it was a nice shape. If you're anything like me and you're slightly smaller in the chest department, I think a neckline like this is quite nice because it goes straight across and doesn't dip down for a decolletage which doesn't exist. It's quite long, like it's knee length kind of, but it fits really nicely because it's a stretch fabric. It's very movable. You can do a lot in it. It shows off the double hip quite nicely. I used to be so self-conscious about this, the two lumps, but now I haven't got enough time to care. Accessorizing as ever with hairy legs. It's nice. This dress was $8.95, which is a little bit on the pricey side for a charity shop dress, but I knew I was going to get a lot of wear out of it, so I justified it. That's that one. Next up, we have this bowl. This is just a little metal bowl that has dolphins on it. And I don't really know why I liked this, to be honest. I think the blue and the green are really nice together. Something pleasing also about metal as a material. And I like that the dolphins have red eyes. They seem a bit devilish. I've been seeing an increasing trend on social media where marine biologists will like talk shit about dolphins and say that they're really nasty. Maybe the demonic eyes are appropriate. So look at that face. He's so pleased with himself, but not as pleased with him as I am. This is just a handy little catch-all which I'm gonna put in my hallway, I think, as a place to chuck keys and whatnot. If you describe this to me, a decorative bowl with dolphins on, I probably wouldn't like the sound of it. But in reality, I like the thing. And this was two pounds, so I went for it. That's that one. Next up, another clothing item. This is something I got more recently as the weather has been getting warmer. This is like a hippie style top shirt thing. It looks like it should smell of patchouli oil and be sold in one of those shops that sells gemstones but I'm not holding that against it. I'm generally somebody who leans towards baggy clothes especially in the summer and this is a lovely lightweight material. I wouldn't say it's massively special but it's a nice kind of dusky colour of purple and is a good throw over piece for the summer if I want something that's going to cover my bum. It's just comfy. The older I get, the less I care about how I look and the more I value comfort. And this is the exact type of thing that I'm talking about. The only thing I'm not super keen on on it are the buttons, which are a little bit too decorative, chintzy looking for my liking. So I'm going to switch those out. But it's a good shape. It's comfy and it's great for hot weather. Also, one of my most adored friends told me not long ago that their favourite colour was this kind of dusky purple. And I'm always trying to impress them. So... That one was, how much were you? Two pounds, which is definitely also a selling point. Next, Next up, I'm gonna show you the two things that I bought most recently because I got these last weekend at the car boot sale. I love a car boot sale. There's something so fun about walking around a field, avoiding piles of horse poo and looking at bric-a-brac. And I bought two things at this car boot. First one being this. Now this is a bag of doll shoes. Let me get one out. So they are little pairs of red plastic doll shoes and there's 50 in this bag. And this seller had an absolute shitload of these. There was just big tubs full of different sizes and colors. And then they had some of these bags which were priced as a lot. I was very tempted to buy many, many of these just because there's something so nice about them. But I limited myself to just this one bag in the one color. And these I bought for some sort of project. What project? I don't know. But I feel like I can do something interesting with 50 pairs of small red shoes. If you want to look them up, they say Cinderella number zero on the bottom of the heel there. I would be very interested to know why this man had so many of these, but I'm just glad to now be the owner of 50 pairs of them. So stick around if you want to see what I do with these in the future. And then the other thing that I bought from the car boot, which is arguably the best thing in this entire haul video, so maybe we're peaking too soon, I don't know. But it is this incredible vintage metal doll's bed. And this is obviously for my cat. This to me is just so bloody adorable. It's got two metal ends and then this slat in the middle that did have like a little mattress pad that had some pretty old looking fabric on it. But I binned that straight away because it was moldy and I just kept the frame. When I was carrying this around, a woman came up to me and said, oh, 
it's a baby Annabelle bed, it's a baby Annabelle bed. Is it a baby Annabelle bed? And I said, I don't know. And when I got home, I was intrigued enough to Google baby Annabelle bed, but there were no hits of anything that looked like this. So I don't know where this is from or when this is from, but I think it's beautiful. Even the color, this like salmony pink is just perfect. And I'm gonna have this in my bedroom next to my bed. I do obviously just need to make a new cushion and things for it. And I think I'm gonna do a video about making over this, making some bespoke bedding for my cat because I'm a child-free millennial and that's what we do with our time. It's so fucking cute. Now, just imagine this with this sleeping cat on it. Does that not make you want to cry? This was eight pounds. I think he was expecting me to haggle, but I am not the haggling kind. I either accept the price or I don't buy it. And I thought eight pounds for this was absolutely fine. Next up, another clothing item. And this, check it out is a little TFL underground shirt, which must have been a uniform. And I just like it as a layering piece. Only two pound from the charity shop. And if you want to seem extra profesh, you just pop a pen on there. Nobody doubts you when you carry a pen on your boob. Next, I got this cap and this was one pound and it says eBay on it. As somebody who loves eBay, both as a regular shopper and occasional seller, this just made me laugh. And I was looking for a cap and I really struggle with caps generally because I always feel like I look like a kid's counsellor when I wear them. But this one's not too offensive. And again, good for the summer. We get a bit of shade on the face. We stop those UV rays. None of this stuff that I bought is going on eBay, by the way, in case you were wondering. Next up, we've got a lamp. And I was talking in my recent toilet room video about how I'm really into stained glass at the moment. And I found this in the charity shop for a fiver. Just a little stained glass table lamp. I've been using this on my bedside. For five pounds, I thought this was a really good deal. These Tiffany style lamps are usually quite expensive, especially if you buy them online. This isn't an old one or anything. I would have thought it's from Argos or somewhere. It's got quite a heavy brass base that looks like a tree trunk. And then this nice floral design stained glass on the top. We got the switch on the cable there. That's how you know that it's a quality bit of kit. My hair's all messed up from wearing that cap. I just got it cut yesterday. It's a little bit more blunt than it has been. When it's all forward, I feel like I look like a brunette Mary Portas. I would actually like to make a video about Mary Portas, Mary Queen of Shops, Mary Queen Charity Shops at some point. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. But back to the actual charity shop haul. A 50p magnet in the shape of a little head of lettuce. This lives on my fridge and it is a magnet. I like it. Next, another clothing thing, this dress. Now, I would have guessed that this is probably from the 90s. It's from BHS, British Home Stores. And it's like a purple floral button front summer dress. It's got a tie around the waist, so you can nip it in at the waist. It's actually, a slightly sheer fabric so you do have to wear something else underneath it which is slightly annoying but it's good for summer it's really lightweight i'm not certain that this is my style and actually i bought this a couple of months ago and i haven't had as much wear out of it as what i thought i'm not usually huge on floors for clothing and i don't know why i made an exception for this you can tie it at the waist if you want more of like a fit and flare 1950s kind of shape but to be honest i prefer it like this just as a kind of sack. I feel like someone in the comments might tell me that this is a Phoebe Buffet dress and take note, I will be offended by that. If I don't wear this this summer, I will probably just redonate it. But it's really comfy and lightweight, so at the moment I've just been wearing it around the house, which it's good for, but hopefully I will get some wear out of it this summer. Also out of the house. Then I have this little heavy metal doorstop which is in the shape of some tulips and I just really love the colours of this. I've been using this on my kitchen door because it pretty much always stays open and it just stops it from rolling back onto itself. It's had the price tag on it um, until now, I don't know why. Nice and heavy as you would expect from a doorstop. Does the job and it looks cute. And this one was two pounds. I know I've just come off the back of saying I'm not really into florals but for homeware I am really into florals. So that's that one. And then another floral thing to prove that I'm a hypocrite is this curtain pelmet. And this was five pound from a charity shop and this is for my living room. I haven't actually gotten around to putting it up yet because the curtains in there need a whole rethink. That also might be a future video if I decide 
to do something jazzy with these curtains. But I love the colour combo of this. Green and pink is always a winner for me. And the colours that you'll see in every room in my flat. And I just think that this is really pretty. I am super into curtain palmets and I feel like not enough people make the most of them. But this one's pretty good. This is the sash I would wear for Miss Charity Shopper 2024. Get in contact if you want to start and then get me to win that pageant. It's nice and long which is handy for me because my living room window is relatively big. It's a nice heavyweight fabric, it's lined. We've got the hanging fixtures at the back so it's ready to hang as and when I actually get round to it. But yeah, five pound for that I thought was really good. I watch a lot of curtain palmets on eBay. They're one of the things that I'm constantly looking at. And it's rare that you find one on its own. Usually they'll be sold with a matching curtain. I prefer a mix and match look. So when I went into the charity shop and this was there, I snapped it right up. Next up is actually a book which my boyfriend found when we were charity shopping together and excitedly showed me because it's a book about paper mache and if you've watched any other video on my channel you'll know that I love paper mache and it's not a book topic you see that regularly. So this has got all different ideas for projects that you can do. Pulping, sculpting, strange beasts fashion apparently these paper mache shells are fashion it's just a good place to get kind of like base ideas there's no project in this book that i want to do specifically but there's lots of things to illustrate the versatility of the medium which i love and this book was two quid so i thought i would buy it as a reference thing the art and craft of paper mache by juliet borden she is riding that fish like there's nothing strange about it at all. This is what I think would happen to me if I tried that. Okay, last clothing item of the bunch is this really beautiful red and navy striped vintage jumper. I would say that this is 1970s. Buttons on the top shoulder here, crew neckline. It's relatively long line with lovely long sleeves, which is wonderful for me because I have lengthy arms. Just think about how many times Zara has released a similar jumper to this that lasts about three washes before it's all bobbly and shit. This guy's been around 40 years and it's pretty much pristine. God, it's warm. I have this on with nothing underneath and it is a bit itchy, but in the winter, I won't just be nude underneath it. And that will make a large difference. I don't think I would wear it with these jeans, but I just can't be asked to style outfits right now. Too warm. You get the idea, it's a jumper. And it's not something you would wear in July. This is something that I bought back in February when it was still cold out. So I haven't had much wear out of it in recent months. But I know I'll wear this a lot when autumn winter comes around again. It's just quite a classic piece. There's something sailory about it, which I appreciate. Tag says, Tricots Armorica. I butchered that. That's the brand in case you want to look it up on eBay. I think my boyfriend will also look nice in this. So I might encourage him to do some borrowing later on in the year. Last few bits now. And my final crafty type item is this metal home light up sign. It doesn't work, but that's fine. I bought it for the letters themselves. They're made of pretty sturdy metal and because they've got this like sunken bit where the lights are, I thought it could be interesting to put resin or something in them. And they also do have hanging bits at the back so I could put them on the wall. My thought for this is to maybe rearrange the letters so it says emo or one of my friends who who is an emo as a Christmas present maybe. I could also make it say O-M because my name is Emily. Like O-M, there you are. So yeah, this was two pounds and it was just something that I impulse bought because I thought I could do something with it. When I'm in the charity shops, I'm always looking out for interesting things or objects that could be repurposed in some type of way. And this is an example of that slightly stupid mentality. Now two final things. This little guy was four pounds and it's just a little catch-all vintage ring holder with a little cat on it. I'm a sucker for cat themed bric-a-brac, especially like these 60s style cats with the long necks and slightly triggered eyes. I thought it was cute. I don't have that much jewellery to use it for jewellery so I don't know what I'm going to use it for, probably just as an ornament to be honest with you. It's got some engraving in the base here and a nose that looks a little bit like an owl's beak. For four pounds, we like him. Final thing is this amazing 
vintage Welsh waffle blanket, which again is in my favourite colour combo of pink and green. I found this in the charity shop a few months ago for a tenner and I absolutely snapped it up because I've been watching these on eBay for ages, like this exact colour combo of blanket I've been coveting. On eBay these go for over £100 easily, plus shipping, which for a big bulky thing like this is also expensive. So I was so happy when I found this one in the charity shop. Where's the tag of it? It does have a label on it. Am I being crazy? Oh, yeah. So it's pure wool made in Wales. A blanket like this, this woven waffle style, is so much work to make. So I can see why they hold their value pretty well. It's lovely and warm because it's real wool and I use this as a throw on my sofa. We got the pink side and the green side. It's too hot today to be wrapped in this. That's the haul. Sorry if this video felt a bit rushed. I kept losing my train of thought when I was talking about things so I feel like I'm gonna have to be quite brutal on the editing side of this video. We'll see if it turns out longer or shorter than six minutes long. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon for other videos. Bye!